All right, if you run a marketing agency, then you know this guy's plight. Basically, your client tells you, dude, these leads suck balls. They're not closing. You know, this is nothing like these red hot referrals I'm used to. And the problem actually is most of the time that they're not actually following up with the lead. So in this case, I'm going to show you how to fix this problem, how you can actually show your client that they're not fucking calling their leads with native reporting in high level. Well, kind of. And I'm going to show you some ways to fix that and figure out if they're actually the problem or if it's you. And so as you can see here, we have an AI quality grade for all of our leads. So if we click on this, we can see a little bit of information about this lead. And we can also see that they came from paid social and the touches. So for about half of these people, they haven't even been manually contacted and none of them have actually been called. And so when your client says, hey, these leads suck, but their touch summary basically looks like this, then you can be pretty sure in this case that it is actually your client's fault and not your fault. I'm going to show you how you can actually set up your own AI grading system to grade leads automatically and also how you can track touches from your clients to see if they're actually doing their job. So the first part here is we need to actually get all of the contact data to be able to analyze. So we need like the custom fields the contacts, um, you know, full name, phone number, email address to make sure they're not fake, all of the text messages, emails, notes, appointments, everything like that, because we can combine it to get a really good picture of what that contact looks like and to provide our own custom grading. So in this case, I'm doing it all in code. I have a marketplace app that I've built out so I can connect to it using the API and then pull out this data for myself. You can do this. You can actually do this through workflows. If you, there's a bunch of apps that are outbound message triggers, so you can get outbound messages, use the reply trigger to get replies, and then also use the call completed trigger to get phone calls and use some app to transcribe them. And then you can get a full picture that way. In this case, we're doing it manually and using an external database. It's really up to you how you want to do it, but I'm just going to show you really quickly how I get the full conversation contact. So basically what we do is we get the contact data and that looks like this. So we have, you know, first name, last name, custom fields, all of this stuff. We save that to the database and then we get their opportunity. So we make another API call to get the opportunities and let me come back here. And then we do the same thing for tasks and appointments and then conversations. And for each conversation, um, we also go and backfill all of the messages so that we can pull in all the phone calls, all the emails, text messages, whatever that there is. And so we have to basically do this with an exponential back off and a while loop because there's kind of a, you know, like you have to paginate which with the API basically for longer conversations. Um, but once you do that, then you should have the full conversation context. And then what you want to do is be able to grade that context. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. So this is our task for conversation grading. And what it looks like is basically we have our system prompt for this AI. So what we're saying is you're a helpful assistant. You know, of course you have to start every prompt with this. I don't know why it's just, it's just kind of the meme between a business. And then you, you can give your business name and a CRM contact. And you say you need to grade the lead quality. And I basically make it A, B, C, D, or F just because I kind of, I like that, that system. And so an F would also basically be like, you know, failing and an A would be like the best lead we could get. And then we we're also putting in some prompting here because we're feeding in the email and the phone number. And so if someone gives like a fake email or a fake phone number, we're going to know most of the time right away that that's a fake email or a fake phone number because you'll be able to see that the phone number is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, or the email is test at test.com. Right? So, and then we're also telling the AI that we want here, we have some rules here and we can tell them to put no grade optionally. Okay. So somewhere it says that, right? But another important part of this is we're using Zod to create a schema for the response. So if you're using this and I'll, I'll show you how to use this in a high level workflow, but if you were using this with high level, it's a little bit harder because you want to get, you might have to use like three, three prompts or something like that. Because basically the idea is we're having it give first, give a summary of the contact and the conversation overall, and then provide reasoning about which grade it should pick. And finally have it pick one of the grades. And this is really important because LLMs, as you may know, don't actually think in the way, same way that you and I think, but they do they can, they are capable of reasoning by spending tokens because basically what we've discovered through LLMs is that language is actually a good proxy for kind of thought and reasoning. 
And so the more tokens these LLMs output, like with reasoning models, the more accurate they're able to be and they can kind of factor in more things. And so what we want to do is we basically want to force the LLM to output a bunch of reasoning before it gives a result. So you could probably use some sort of regex to extract this result. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little later using a native high level workflow, but this is kind of how you might want to do it just in plain code. And then another important part of this is when we get the response, so we're using Google Gemini 2.0 flash here. When we get the response, we want to make sure that it actually gave a valid grade as our, our value. So A, B, C, D, or F, just so that we don't get any weird errors. Okay. And so this will give us that grade that we need. But then there's also some prompting here because you'll see we can add in some examples of how to of how to grade this contact. So in this case, we're basically giving it like a list of different rules. But in your case, you know, you might have just one paragraph that kind of breaks down like A through F gradings or different rules around that. And I'll show you how we feed those prompts in. So in my case, I've set up a custom system to enter these prompting details. You can do it, you know, however you want. You can just put it basically into the ChatGPT prompt. But you can see we have an example of an A grade lead, which in this industry, that basically means they want something high tier, you know, like a full wrap, full PPF, full ceramic coating. And they have a newer vehicle because what we've seen is basically someone who has a shit box is never going to pay four or $5,000 for a service that's going to make their vehicle just that little bit better because their car is probably worth four or $5,000. We want somebody who, someone who has a car worth like 30, 40, $50,000. And then we have some other rules around that. So we tell it again, make sure to look carefully at what kind of car they actually have, because that's a really big indicator. And to make sure that if they mention that their paint is chipping, then that's a shit box of a, of a lead. Their car is a shit box and you know, they're probably broke. Yeah, you can get a little discriminatory here because I mean, ultimately, yeah, bad rap isn't a fix for bad paint and you gotta be pretty critical of grading your leads. Um, especially if, you know, like when you show your lead grades to your client, you actually want your client to agree with the grades and maybe you give them a way to manually input. Like I built out a way to man for clients to manually input their own opinion of the, of the lead grades because you want your client to agree so that when you show them, Hey, you haven't called their leads, they should go fuck like this guy's right. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not carrying my weight. And so that would be, I guess my main advice here is, is make your, your grading fairly strict. But now I'm going to show you that sometimes the client actually is right. And I'm going to show you how to do all this stuff natively within high level at the end here. Sometimes the client is right, because if we look at this sub account, we can see that the median lead quality is a two and a half out of five, which that's F D basically a D plus or a C minus. So it's not the best, a two and a half out of five D plus median lead quality, which means most of our leads are pretty shitty. And this is, this is common in this industry, right? just because for car wrap, like you get a lot of people who don't really know what it costs. You know, they're not properly framed, I guess, on what wrap actually is. And you do kind of just get a lot of shitty leads, but you can actually use your lead grading to optimize your ads. So I'm going to talk about that. So here we have this workflow, which basically only fires when our custom field last score grade has changed to an A or when it has changed to a B. So that means basically contact can get graded multiple times, right? Because maybe a contact becomes better when we learn they have a different vehicle or whatever. And so when someone does get an A or B grade lead, we're gonna add this tag graded onto our contact, right? A, B grade means basically they're a A or a B grade lead. And this is important because when we add this tag, that allows us to fire a Facebook conversion event. And so it's kind of interesting because what you'll see is that we have the, the, the trigger here is a form. And I think this is the optimal way to do it because otherwise I'm not quite sure that you get the Facebook click ID. And so to accurately report the data, I think you kind of need to do this, but basically what we're doing is as soon as someone fills up this form, we're reporting the lead event and then we're sending out like all of our automated text and everything. And then we're having a wait step. And basically what this does is it waits until we add this tag a B grade. And it also has a timeout of 30 days. And so what that means is when there's a timeout, we just skip over this contact. But if they're graded an A or a B within 30 days of being created, then we're going to go to Facebook and we're going to report, Hey, we just got a complete registration event. Okay. And so you can use whatever kind of event you want, 
the important part is that we're actually going to be able to optimize for people that complete this basically complete registration event, which means we can start getting much higher quality leads because we actually just optimize for higher quality leads. We don't have to change the form. You know, we don't have to change the formatting or the, the creative or the targeting. All we do is we only report Facebook what we actually want to see in terms of leads. And so what you'll notice here is that on our lead campaigns at the ad set level, our performance goal is maximize number of conversions other than like leads or whatever. We're using our website and then that conversion event is a complete registration event. So that way when someone gets graded as an A or a B, we're reporting that back to, back to Facebook and we can start like targeting these people who are actually A and B create leads to improve the quality. And this is something you could honestly probably do with all of your clients just to try to like help, you know, preempt that, that problem of the lead quality. Because if they see that, you know, like in my case, if they see that all their leads have like brand new cars, which the recent ones do because of this targeting, then they can start to be like, oh wow, this, this targeting stuff is, is actually working. And it's just me, you know, not calling them fast enough. And so probably the way you'd want to implement this is, I don't know, let's say we just have a trigger that's like new lead or something. Let's say like contact created, right? So we'll have this as the trigger because this is going to make it so that any new contact will get evaluated. And then let's have like a wait step. Okay. And this wait step might be, I don't know, five, like let's do one day. Okay. So let's make it wait for one day. And this might make it so that every lead is evaluated daily. Okay. And then what we could do is we could have, all right, you want to have an external way to track the conversation history. So like I was talking about earlier, you'd need call transcripts, outbound messages, inbound messages, and then maybe some way to like track notes or tasks or appointments, whatever. But what you should end up with is basically a recounting of the whole conversation overall. And then what you could do is you could use ChatGPT powered by OpenAI. Actually, you know what? How about this? We'll do their new decision maker. This actually eliminates a little bit of work here. So what we would do is decide if good, okay? And we could literally just have it be our branches. So we'll have one for qualified and the default branch for not qualified. I'll just delete these other branches. So basically for, uh, for this, we're gonna say, your job is to look at the lead and determine if they're a good quality, okay? And then in information is gonna be, let's say contact last full or full context, something like this, okay? Because we're gonna need this to run our analysis on. And so the AI, obviously you'd wanna provide more instructions, but basically this is the system prompt, this is the user message. And so it would look at the full context and try to decide with one of these branches. And so we'll call this branch qualified and the description will be, this lead is qualified if they have a brand new car and if they say their budget is at least like three or $4,000. And so with this branch, basically all we need to do is save action and then we can just add that tag. And so that tag is gonna be AB grade lead. And so all we have to do here is get the full conversation context. I'm not gonna go super deep into that because I've already shown you my code for doing that. And frankly, that is an entirely other video. That is a massive pain in the ass. But this is really all you would need for grading the contact and then adding the necessary tag to get the grading working. So yeah, I think this is extremely useful. And then, you know, obviously you can find some way to aggregate this in Google Sheets or something to show your client like, hey, here's your leads. You know, here's who you've actually contacted and the qualities of those people you haven't contacted. But yeah, that's really all there is to it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure there's a click, uh, link down below. Make sure not to click that. Yeah, definitely don't click on that. I mean, I could really only met like, if you really just want this done for you without having to do a bunch of work setting it up, and worrying about how to set it up, then I, you know, you could click the link below. But again, like, I don't know, it might not be a good idea. You know, you might find a product that you, you know, never stop uh, using. And so I don't know that that could be bad. Some might some might see that as bad. So anyways, that's the shameless plug. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.